Cinema Beats Production. Shalom, Israel and Isa. Shalom, 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 Shalom. shalom. Uh, welcome to another episode of Israel and Asia. Welcome to another episode of Israel and Asia. It's been a while since I post a video, but I uh, just want to get back to work. Um, got much more work to do. Uh, Israel, this, these videos that we've been making and uh, for a while and I've been collaborating, I will be making more of these again, of course, um, and making better videos. However, uh, we got work to do over here in Asia. Um, this video here is called the Moab Captivity. Uh, if you watch every last one of the videos, it's only dealing with Asia, this is, which is why it's called Israel, the scattered Israelites in Asia. Uh, a lot of our camps are not dealing with this side of the world. Uh, I take it that God put the spirit on me to capture this moment and capture these areas. There are more books that I still haven't been able to get out, but I will get it out once I got time or get some help or laborers that work with me. Uh, the, you know, the work is plenty, but the labors are few. We all know that. Um, so bottom line is I'm just going to hit this, um, this presentation talking about the Moab captivity. Esau is not the only one that put Israel in captivity. Moab put people in captivity. And if Moab put people in captivity, that means they're Israel where? In Asia. So if you didn't know, Moab has a Jim Crow manual. Moab has a Jim Crow manual. Here it is right here in your face. The only reason why I only have these two pages is because these are the only two pages that I even have it translated into English, how to manage your slave. Um, the content, if you look at the table of context, how to buy a slave, getting the best of your slave, sex and slavery. What makes a good slave? The punishment of a slave. When only torture will do. Fun and games. Reminder of Spartacus. Reminder of Spartacus. Remember Spartacus, I'm sorry. Setting slave free. The problems of with freemen christian and their slaves and farewell these are your this is the table context of how to manage your slaves in asia in china so moab has a jim crow so let's just, just hit it let's, let's just deal with some scriptures so that we don't just say oh it's just a book it's you know i like i love it when people post things don't have proof esau has a thing saying i'm white and i'm right uh we can't do that we can't afford to do that however they love to write books, so we just use their own books. And then, of course, we got to use our scriptures to, to cross-reference these issues. So let's use Isaiah 16, 4. Let my outcast dwell with thee, Moab. Be thou a convert to them from the faces of the spoiler. For the exhortation, for ext um, extermination is at an end, and the spoiler ceases. The oppressor, the oppressor are consumed out of the land, out of the land of what? Moab, out of the land of Shinem. That's your Isaiah 49. First, uh, uh, Jeremiah 48, 11. Moab have may have been at ease from his youth and he have settled on his lease and he and have not been emptied from vessel to vessel. Neither have he gone into captivity. Therefore, his taste remains in him and his scent is not changed. The point of these scriptures is to make sure that everybody understand that Israel did go into captivity with Moab. And whenever there was a slave trade or a war in China or in Asia, it was never ever Chinese people that was being sold into slavery. So if you ever pick up a book, and read it realize when they say these people went into slavery and from ship from vessel to vessel into bondage into chains into slavery and they say oh those were chinese selling other chinese false make sure you always understand that this is your scripture to confirm it please utilize it when you read it and realize that when you're reading these books you're reading about israelites being sold in asia here's one of the contracts a sample of a contract from many years ago a contract for the purchase of slaves during the Tang Dynasty in, uh, in Sejing. In the contract record, since purchasing of a 15-year-old slave for 
a six boat of plain silk. So they were selling slaves for silk and five Chinese coins. Now the thing is, when they were selling these, Chinese, these slaves, most people will identify these slaves being as Chinese. Incorrect. Now the Scythians, everybody knows, many of the Scythians were Israelites. The Scythians were related to a legend popular among medieval Jews who equated them with the lost tribe of Israel. According to the Bible, the Israelites became lost after the northern, the northern, there you go, that's your northern tribe of Israel was conquered by the Assyrians who dispersed them among the Medians. So basically, Media is your modern day Iraq. A lot of the people, a lot of the northern tribe went into Iraq and were sold into the Sahara slave trade and it was sold ultimately into China. As you can read here, it identified these people as being what? Black skin and woolly hair as evidence, but also their oral tradition, languages, and methods of weaving and practices of circumcision. That these people were, in fact, the people and the children of Israel. So realize Moab had a slave trade, and that slave trade was consumed of people being sold on ships, chained, and these individuals were what? The northern tribe, the lost tribe of Israel, also on the east side of the world in Asia. Now, these maps are, once again, you've seen these many, many, many times in previous videos. Go back and watch them all. I know these videos are not that the best quality. However, this is all we got until somebody, so I like I said, until we got laborers out here that can help make these videos better. I challenge you to make them better or, hey, work with me and we can make these things better. And you can help read them for me because the reading, the, the presentation can always be better. I highly, definitely, I do agree. So I'm not saying I'm the best. I just know, know that I'm the only one putting this information out here. So let's continue. The 10 Lost Tribes. We just identified the 10 Lost Tribes coming from media. did go into Asia. Uh, the 10 Lost Tribes became known as the Greeks, as the Persians, the Romans, or the Sakas, the Sakis. The Sakas and Sakis did go into Asia. As you can see on this map, there is an area that identified them as Saka. Where is this located? This is in Asia. This is a map of Asia. Sakas were over here. And if you pay attention, if you look at Nawasaki, Osaka, those are origins of the Jewish word or the name for those 12 tribes called Sakas that migrated into Asia. And I explained it earlier, it says Synthenians, right? The presentation on this last slide, Synthenians. On uh, paragraph five or sentence five, we father stated that the Sakas were a Synthenian race and came from where? From media, came from media. So those that was in media that was sold and escaped were your northern tribes going into Asia and escaping, either being sold or escaping captivity or escaping persecution. This is a Mongolian map. So remember, this is a Mongolia map as well during the Mongolian time, which was also in Asia. The Josen dynasty, many of the Israelites somehow made it that far into the Chosen, which is also called the Josen dynasty in Korea. Your Phoenicians, you will read later on that some of these people were identified as Phoenicians during the BC time frame. And you have your Chada Jews, which ultimately made it all the way to Japan in Asia, which is probably more likely from the Synthenians, which were probably also your Sakas, which is why I mentioned earlier, Nawasaka, Kawasaka, Osaka. Your Synthenians, Synthenians. 400 to 200 BC. Your Jews doing the Silk Road in the Hain location, your traders. This is all prior to the death of Jesus. And your Jews were, sitting, were citizens in these locations and migrated farther and farther east. You can't deny these locations in Asia. The Moab captivity existed. Why? Because there were Israelites in Asia. Not Asia Minor, in Asia. Asia, I know, and if you read the book, the Bible, it says Asia Minor. That's still somewhere near Europe. 
when we say Asia, these books and this content is explained to you. Israelites, northern tribe, Sakas, Scythians made it all the way into Asia. And there was a Moab captivity, which we have showed you already on how they managed their slaves, which were end up being who? Being your Israelites over here in Asia. The list goes on. In fact, Moab had the longest slave trade in history. That is in one of my other presentations where we talk about how this slave trade started all the way from 600 uh, AD and lasted all the way up to at least, at least the 1500s, starting with the Tang Dynasty. So the Tang Dynasty, we mentioned earlier in, in the army, um, we was reading about the media, um, coming out of media. They were dark hair, dark skin, woolly hair, right? So what did they end up becoming? They, called, because they were called the Sakas. We identified that, right? So the Sakas are individuals that were uh, they were names they were using from coming from the Scythians. Once they reached uh, China, China was renaming and reclassifying these individuals as the Kunglung. The Kunglung, they became Kunglung slaves in the Tang Dynasty. So you want to look through this document. This document explains to you that these individuals were once again dark skinned, woolly haired people coming from where? From from the Middle East, not going to say Middle East, but coming from Africa ultimately making it all the way over into Asia during the Mongol, uh, Mongolian rulership, during Genghis Khan and Marco Polo. These individuals were ultimately uh, assimilating with these individuals and being going into captivity and being sold back and forth throughout the continent of China. Here's your proof. This is a book. This the um, sketchers of the Eastern history. What happened during that time? Well, there were multiple fighting. Who was ruling? I mentioned earlier, Genghis Khan was ruling. The Mongolians were ruling in this location. And when they were ruling, they were taking people into captivity. They actually was fighting with many people. So who, who, who were they fighting with? Well, they, they actually was able to compel to fight and, and, um, and they had people, individuals that were captured and taken into captivity and taken prisoners and the hand it says right here it says an entangled and a marshal was was taken prisoner april 900 a.d and was set in chains was sent in chains to samakar samakin that is your modern day afghanistan your modern day afghanistan so you got the media captivity they went from media to where afghanistan now why is this important because a lot of Israelites were identified in Afghanistan and Iraq during these times. Iraq is your, as it is, is your media, but you also had individuals taken into chains into Afghanistan. And they say in a, in a prophecy, they will take you into chains. It says in a prophecy. So this is just more confirmation, just trying to line it up for you so you can understand that these individuals that were be taken to captivities, these weren't your, your, your Islamic people. These were not your Chinese people. I already mentioned to that in scripture. These were Israelites. These were Israelites. Well, how do we know? Well, the books tell you so. Jews in, um, in Boher were taken. It says, when a god of I stirred up the spirit of Pol, the king of Syria, Assyria, and Telek uh, they were carried away. Who was carried away? The Reubenites, the Gadites, and half of Manasseh. Hmm. And where did they go? Now is so, uh, Sam Arkin, Ar Arkan, Sam Arkin, or your your modern day Afghanistan. So this again is confirming they were taken in chains in one book. This one they saying they were taken into this location and they actually identify what tribes they were. Reuben, Gad, and half of Manasseh. So was Israelite over here? Absolutely. Was God, and he says, when Gad was over here, now the scripture just prophesied that their troop will be taken over, um, which shall overcome them. What troops? The Mongolians. Yes, they were taken over in America too. Yes, the prophecy fulfilled on both sides of the world. It, it can, can we accept that? That needs to be accepted because you don't accept it, you, you, you're, you, you know, you, you're, you're subtracting for the four corners of the earth, and at the same time, not all Israel, same people, Israel went to one location. It's impossible.
In fact, God wouldn't have allowed that to happen. So Genghis Khan had a Jewish Mongolian troop in 1210 AD. Interesting, and they call it the troop. Here's why. In Kaifeng, everybody knows Israel was definitely in Kaifeng. Many of the Israelites that was in Kaifeng went to captivity into the Philippines. The Gadites. So, here we are. Another book. Uh, the Sketchers of uh, Eastern History. We are talking about Israelites. Let's confirm again, just with this book right here. They're talking about his. this guy, this is his father, uh, the physician named Arum and or Aaron. And Aaron uh, seemed to be ba a baptized Jew. Aaron was a baptized Jew. And this did not interfere with his name, which was calmly enough enough among the, the Syrians Christians and besides would certainly been changed to change at baptism so he his name would be changed during his baptism like they did with other Israelites on the African side of the world into America and from and but from the fact of that he celebrated his son's born name was the son of the Hebrew uh, bar Ivory or Ivory that would that means the son of Hebrew. So was this person an Israelite? More likely, this individual was a Israelite. So what happened to this person? Well, this guy Aaron, when the Mongolians or the Tartars invaded the country in the summer of what? Summer of 1243. His father Aaron, in a common way, and the others wished it to be taken refuge with their family in Syria, but was hindered by an accident and thus he and his, and his escaped fate a fugitive who fell into the hands of who the Mongolians and we just mentioned a second ago that the Mongolians had a Jewish troop and we also mentioned that there was Gadite Ru, uh, Reuben and Manasseh in this location that happened to be taken into captivity by Genghis Khan who was what a Mongolian the Mongols. The Mongols took Israelites into captivity. This is your Moab captivity. Another map. Just funny. Your Uyghurs are from a what? A Saka tribe. Your Uyghurs that are currently in China at this very moment under persecution are considered Muslim, but they're being put in concentration camps and are considered a threat to society. You can go YouTube it, YouTube Uyghurs persecution in China, and you will find videos of Chinese putting Uyghurs in concentration camps. And it's just a coincidence. They came from the Saka tribes. So they are now under persecution and they were there many, many years ago. There's your Mongolian troop. The massacre of 853, 854. Now, Mongolia. Now we, we just mentioned Mongolia. Now the funny thing is about Mongolia that there were individuals in Mongolia that had some rulership or so that was also in Russia during the Dark Ages. Uh, if you read the name of this definition here, the Cerny La Lude, the Cerny Lude, Cerny Lude literally means black people. Cerny Lude means black people people just look it up it's in a book i mean here it says common people but if you look over here in this definition in the in the glossary showing you means common people literally mean black people that that should submit to mongolian rule it's in the book
this is more confirmation of their their time period when they were in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, where they were taken captive by the Mongolians, which were more likely your um, your uh, Moabites, were more likely your Moabites, and they were in the Hindu Kush, and you know living there, they probably converted to Islam, became Muslims, but eventually went into captivity. It, the, the curses follow us every single place across the globe. Your Moabite captivity. The deer stones that are located. We already mentioned Nathali earlier. Nathali was in this location as well. There are hundreds and hundreds of deer stones throughout Mongolia. How do I know? Well, it's in books and oh yeah, I I've been there. I seen them on my own eyes. There's a lot of deer stones for some random reason, and Nathalie would just happen to be in Mongolia. There's your deer stones. Oh, artifacts of deers. Just a coincidence. The Nathali, a deer let loose. Somebody's really fascinated with deers over in Mongolia. And it just have got books right here that's saying that who was it here? Many of the Nathalian wandered on this on the mountains. 